I've always wanted to love mechanical keyboards. I love the sound they make, they're fun to type on, and they have really cool features. But I always came back to this, the Magic Keyboard. I had muscle memory for all the keyboard shortcuts, I knew where the display brightness and everything else was, but I've now found a mechanical keyboard I love, I've been using it for the last two weeks, and I'm gonna stick with it. This is the Keychron Q2 Max. It's a 65% layout. I love that it comes in white with these green highlights. You can connect it via Bluetooth to three devices, use a physical USB-C cable, and it even comes with a USB transmitter if you wanna use the 2.4 gigahertz connection. I've spent a lot of time mapping all the keys, this way my muscle memory stays intact, and I found the best keyboard layout for using the RGB backlight and doing things like paste and match style or controlling my Mac display brightness. And if you're really interested in that, you can use the chapters below because I'm gonna go in depth on the key mappings for this. But in the box, you get the Keychron Q2 Max. You get keys for both Mac and Windows, plus the tool to remove the keys if you'd like. They give you a USB-C cable in the box and all the tools you need to work on your keyboard. Just to compare, one of the things I like about the Q2 Max is its smaller size. I had the Q1 Pro, and this is a really nice keyboard. It had the RGB backlight, it had the nice knob up here for adjusting volume or brightness, but it was just a little too big for my desk. Here's the Q2 Max compared to the Q1 Pro. You do lose that function row of keys, but I'll show you the key mappings I use for the new keyboard where I don't miss that row anymore. Also, I use an under desk keyboard tray and the Q1 Pro was just a little too big, took up too much room, couldn't really use the mouse as well. And so the Q2 Max size is just perfect for this tray. And yes, I still keep my Magic Keyboard behind the Q2 Max for simply one feature, that Touch ID button. Now, yes, if you turn off your Magic Keyboard, you'll then be prompted to approve a lot of things on the Apple Watch. And that's not a terrible experience, double-clicking the side button. But for making Apple Pay purchases or accessing other parts of my Mac, I just like having the Touch ID button there, accessible. And it's out of the way on this desk tray pretty far back. And also, I'll put a link to this desk tray in the show notes and also this Satechi desk mat. I really like this. Now, I got this keyboard with Shell White and Jupiter Red Switch these are actually the quietest you can get. Build quality on this is amazing. It is very heavy, much heavier than you think it is. It's actually a little heavier than the Q1 Pro. It's an entire metal body made out of aluminum. Now, I am not a mechanical keyboard expert, so I'm gonna say some words I don't really know what they mean, but it has a double gasket design and KSA double shot PBT keycaps. How do you like that? And it also has cool RGB effects. And I programmed the knob so I can change the dimness here by using a function button. And I can also change the color by holding a second function button. And I have lots of different strobing effects and waterfall effects, things like that. I'll show you how I have that programmed in a minute. Whatever it wants to hear though, let's type on it and see how these red switches sound. Pretty satisfying sound. I'll also say I have this connected to Bluetooth for my Mac, although I typically have the physical cable inserted here just so there's zero latency. I don't have to think about it waking up, but I will say if you had previous Keychron keyboards you connected via Bluetooth and that latency from waking the keyboard up to it actually connecting to the Mac bothered you, I've found that the Q2 Max actually connects really fast even when it's just on Bluetooth after the keyboard has fallen asleep. I'll give you one more typing example. Sounds pretty fun, not gonna lie. Now, if you're transitioning from an Apple Magic keyboard to something like the Q2 Max, there's two things you really need to give a certain amount of time to get used to. Number one, the Apple Magic keyboard is super low profile. Whether you have this on a desk tray or on your desk, the keyboard is basically flat. Rest your wrist right here. Basically zero elevation needed for your hands. Having this kind of typing posture on a mechanical keyboard, it just doesn't work. It's not gonna feel good. So you can do one of two things. You can get a wrist rest, something like this from Grove Made is really nice. That'll help elevate your hands a little bit and make it more comfortable to type. Or if that's not high enough, Go ahead with the full on gel wrist rest. This will elevate your hands even more and should make it easier to type on. If you use a desk tray, it might be low enough where your hands just kind of float above the keyboard. And this kind of floating hand posture will also make it easier to type on compared to the Magic Keyboard. In addition to that typing posture, the other thing you're gonna have to get used to are where the keys are and what keyboard shortcuts you're most accustomed to. One keyboard shortcut I use very often is paste and match style. If you don't know what that is, leave a comment below. Maybe I need to do a whole video on keyboard shortcuts. But on the Apple Magic Keyboard, it's Shift, Option, Command, V. And so my muscle memory is just pinky on Shift, pointer and middle on Option and Command, and then hitting V. Out of the box, something like the Keychron, you're not gonna be able to do that because this is a function button down here. And so you have Shift, you have Command, you have V, but this is not the option key you need. But thankfully, you can program the Q2 Max with QMK and VIA. You don't have to know what that is, I'm gonna show you in a second and you can change what all of these keys are to match your muscle memory. Side note, full on arrow keys, like old school style, very nice. You can also customize what this knob does and also give it multiple functions when you're holding those function keys. So here's how I've set up my keyboard and keyboard shortcuts. You go to usevia.app, I'll put that URL down in the description as well. 
You click Authorize Device, and you should see your keyboard here if you've connected it via cable or Bluetooth. Click Connect. Now, if your keyboard doesn't show up, you might need to download a file from the Keychron website. I'll put a link to this page in the description as well. But you scroll down, download this JSON file, unzip it, and then back in the Via Keys app, you go to the Settings, and in the Design tab, click Load, and then choose that JSON file that you've downloaded. Once you've done that, you can hang out in the Configure panel, and this is where you're going to customize your entire keyboard. Now, the first thing I did is get my Option button back for my muscle memory to work. To change a key, you just click the key, and then choose what you would like it to be down here. You can scroll through between Basic, Media Commands, even macros, which we'll get to that in a second, layers, special, custom, all that kind of stuff. You'll actually find that in the custom menu and here, right option, just click that. And now the key will be changed to right option. For the next key, this is actually a macro. If I go down to the second tab here on the left, you'll go to macros and I only have one macro and this is to mimic the international keyboard symbol on the magic keyboard so I can access my emojis. To record a macro, you just hit the record button here and the keyboard button is control, command, and then space. Then that will be macro zero and you can go back to your key mapping, click that key on the keyboard, go to macro and then choose M zero. Now hitting that macro mimics the international key on the keyboard and brings up my emojis. Next was display brightness. Volume uses the knob and I'll get to that in a second, but display brightness is tough because there's no function key row. So for that, I actually moved the function key. So even though the key cap here on my physical keyboard is function one, I know that's option. This is my international macro. And then I've mapped this delete key up here to function one. To do that, I can click it here and then go to layers and choose function one for that key. Now, when I hold the function one key, which is the delete key on this keyboard, I can access a second layer of commands here for the numbers. So here in the top right, you'll see it's at layer zero right now. If I go to layer one, you'll see I've mapped one and two to F14 and 15. These are actually the keyboard shortcuts to adjust the brightness on your Mac. You can figure out more keyboard shortcuts like that by going to system settings, clicking the Apple icon in the top left, scroll all the way down to keyboard and then click keyboard shortcuts. If I go to display, you'll see decrease brightness is F14, increase is F15. You can also see the other keyboard shortcuts like show desktop as F11. If I wanted to program that on my Keychron, I could. I'll select the number three command, Remember, I'm here in layer one. Make sure to keep track of which layer you're in. I'll go up to basic because F11 is in the basic category. And then I'll click F11. This means when I hold the function key over here, I'm accessing the second layer of commands and F11 is to clear the desktop. So if I hold delete and press three, you'll see the desktop now clears on my Mac. In the same way, I can hold the function key and then do one and two, and it will change the brightness of my Mac display. After programming display brightness and the function key and option, I was pretty much good to go. The knob automatically adjusts your volume. So I can turn the knob right, turn the volume up, turn the knob left to turn it down. And this is also a button that you can click, which automatically is a mute button right out of the box. I also wanted to be able to use this button for the RGB backlights on the keyboard. For that, I can click the knob here in the Via Keys app. Remember, I'm in layer zero, so this is no function keys pressed. And this is the volume decrease, volume up, and the mute. If I go to layer one, this is holding the function key once. I'll click the knob again. You can choose the rotate counterclockwise and clockwise actions and what happens when you press it. So right here, I have it toggled. A pressing it toggles the RGB on or off and then decreases or increases the intensity. I can click this, click in this text field and you'll see all the different options. You have Bluetooth, Hue. And if you scroll down, you'll see brightness for RGB decrease and the press encoder when I press that knob, I have that on RGB toggle. That command is right here. So if I hold the function key, which I mapped to this delete key and press this knob, I can turn the backlight on or off. And once I turn the backlight on, I can adjust the intensity of the backlight by turning the knob. It's a little awkward, but if I'm adjusting the RGB backlight, I'm probably not in a hurry. So I can quickly turn on or off the backlight and decrease or increase the intensity that way. Now I've mapped my home button here on the keyboard as a secondary function button to access layer two. Layer two, if I click the knob, here I've chosen the RGB decrease or increase color. So I can hold the function two button and scroll on the wheel and you'll see the colors change. And that'll go either way, I can go back and forth. And if I hold the second function key and press the knob, it'll scroll through some of the effects. If I wanna go back to just a static light, I actually have one more function command going all the way down to layer three. I'll click the knob and when I press that button, I have that go back to the plain, just static RGB lights on. So I can hold these two buttons at the same time, which goes down to layer three, click it, and now I'm back to just the static RGB. I can quickly change the color, 
try different patterns by clicking the knob, or go back to a plain color by holding both and clicking the knob once. And if I want to turn it off, I can just hold function key one, press it, and I can toggle the RGBs on or off. That's a lot of customization, but if you really enjoy typing on a mechanical keyboard and that sound, mapping those keys so they're more like your regular keyboard, whether that's a Magic Keyboard or something else, will really help the process. And the last thing, if you're going to try a mechanical keyboard, I would recommend giving it at least two weeks. It took me that full two weeks to finally feel comfortable on the mechanical keyboard and enjoy typing and feel like I don't need to go back to that Magic Keyboard anymore. I'll put a link to the Q2 Max down in the video description. If you have any questions on it, leave comments below. I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. And if you want some productivity tips for the Mac, I'll leave one of my videos right up here. Subscribe to the channel before you go and hit that like button. I have lots of tips, especially for building shortcuts. If you'd like to see more of those, let me know down in the comments. And I'll put a playlist of shortcuts right up here. So, you know, you can just binge them all and create awesome automations on your phone, iPad, or your Mac. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.